you have the first aid for the year 70 step 1 exam, it talks about all the study techniques and their efficacies. My name is Siddharth and I'm a medical intern here in India and in this video I'm going to be talking about the study techniques that I use by students and which ones are the best ones supported by scientific evidence. Most often the techniques that we consider effective aren't really effective and in this video we will see which ones are effective according to research. If you have exams coming up hopefully by the end of this video you will be able to understand how to go about it. The main methods of learning that we students use are rereading, underlining and highlighting, and summarization. If you open the first aid to the USMLE Step 1 exam, it clearly mentions all of these uh, uh, techniques in the low efficacy section. It says that most students use rereading and it has not been shown to correlate with the high grade point average. Further, it describes highlighting as a, a passive method of learning which makes recalling and learning not, a, not an effective way, making application much more difficult. I myself have used a lot of these techniques while studying, but in med medical school I found that rereading the whole book one night before the exam is not possible. I'm sure many of my friends use these same techniques and face similar difficulties like me. Next, moving on to the moderate efficacy techniques, this consists of elaborative interrogation, mnemonics, and concept mapping. Mnemonics refers to an acronym or a statement that helps us remember specific information in a particular way. For example, VACTRIL consists of vertebral anomalies, enorectal malformations, cardiac anomalies, tracheoesophageal fistula, renal agenesis, and limb anomalies. Another such example would be a poster from my wall here. It says that every decent female rises extremely. It's from Marrow and it's for the phases of labor in uh, OBGYN. You can see how easy it was for me to retrieve the, this information so easily. And uh, it also creates a superior retention power. Self-made mnemonics are better to use because they are easy to remember and very personal for you. But uh, I can I personally stick to standard mnemonics because uh, it's easier for me and I don't waste more time on that. Elaborative interrogation means to ask the why behind every statement and understanding the why so that in turn you uh, retrieve the statement when it's needed. This I feel is one of the methods that I use the most because I like to understand the statements and have a crystal clear knowledge of it. So that when I'm recalling, I recall the understanding and then the statement, which is easier for me. I talked about how I study in medical school in a previous video, do check it out. The next one is concept mapping, which involves formation of graphical information and pictorial information, so that it's easier for you to form an image in your brain. It's very useful for people who are used to learning with pictures, but I find this technique very time consuming and I wouldn't recommend this. And now finally onto the high efficacy ones. Practice testing is one of the best techniques that you can practice and after having read, read the topic once at least, it directly tests how much information you have retained and how much you can retrieve when you are asked a question. In fact, research has shown a positive correlation between the number of practice tests completed and higher grades. Using question banks with abilities to choose a particular topic and choose particular types of questions like Marrow and UVOLT would be the best ways to prepare for exams like the USMLE Step 1 exam and the NEET PG exam. And the final technique is paced repetition. It means to revise a particular topic in a particular time frame regularly. There are many applications and systems like the Anki flashcard system that makes a deck for you to solve every day so that it's uh, more organized and uh, an automated system so that you don't have to worry about it. I myself used pen and paper to make schedules of revising the topics that I found difficult at more, uh, more frequent intervals than topics that I found easy. I used it during my final year of MBS and I found it very helpful and organized. I haven't used any flashcards or Anki till now because I think it's a very time consuming pr process for me which will reduce productivity. 
but there are a lot of ready made anki decks that can be used as flashcards and i hope to try them in the future i will put down all the links of the research papers that i went through so that if you wanted to read about it you can go ahead and do so i hope this video helped you a little and gave you a little insight of how to study and which study techniques to use while studying and if it did go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more videos and i'll see you in the next one